What's up everybody, Fatty here with another Master League video. Today we are going to be running a team of Palkia, a Metagross with a Best Buddy boost, and finally we are going to be using everybody's favorite safe swap, Zacian. And before we start, I do have to say that I did get this team idea from watching Tho Technical's earlier video, which I will link in the description below. So credit goes to them for giving me this team idea. I think this team is quite amazing, and I can't wait to start using it here in this video before we start we are going to be going with the palkia lead and we are going to be going up against a mama swine so mama swine is a park ground type this is not the worst matchup for us all we have to do is get to a few aqua tails now i've had a small problem while playing pvp lately the current internet i am using is pretty weak and there therefore is a lot of lag but in this set, we are not going to be facing too much lag, thankfully. Uh, here we're going to have to shield up from the Avalanche. Even though we are a part water type, that part dragon type does not appreciate being hit by Avalanches. And as you can see, our Dragon Tail is just destroying this Mammoth Swine. We're going to be able to get to another Aqua Tail really fast. And this is going to start putting up the pressure on my opponent. They are going to, of course, decide to shield up and go for another avalanche which we will shield as well so this is going to be a factor of who decides to shield uh first who decide who runs out of shields first as i must say uh here my opponent is going to quickly swap out into a guard chomp a shieldless guard chomp will be taking this aqua tail quite nicely um the rest of my team i guess doesn't handle guard chomp too well uh Zashin should be able to do a pretty good deal of damage to it but it'll probably be hit with a sand tomb or earth power uh, I am running this session with a move set of wild charge and close combat so no matter what move we use we are gonna get debuffed here we're gonna be hit with the earth power not too much damage thankfully and now we're just gonna be able to get to the close combat take out the guard chomp and now depending on what my opponent's final Pokemon is going to be uh, we pretty much got this so we take out the guard chomp their final pokemon is a metagross uh so this isn't looking too good for us uh if they go for that earthquake it could potentially take us out so what we're gonna do here is we are going to go for a close combat and then quickly swap out into our metagross we are for sure gonna take an earthquake here i have no doubt about that uh will it take us out that's the question so i am running this metagross with a best buddy boost and that honestly could make a big difference in how this goes. We do survive that earthquake quite nicely. As my opponent switches in their Mammoth Swine, we're going to use this opportunity to farm up some energy. And we're going to just be barely able to make that earthquake go off. And this is definitely going to take out my opponent's Metagross. So we win that by the skin of our teeth. Very good game to my opponent. This team is definitely amazing. Can come back from the worst kinds of scenarios. So quickly moving on to the next battle here, we are going to be facing off against another Palkia lead, except this one seems to have a best buddy boost with it. Uh, so they're going to be able to get to their charge moves a lot quicker than us, pretty much winning the speed tie. We're going to have to shield up here. And uh, now my strategy is just basically uh, same deal. We're just going to go for the Aqua Tail as well. Hopefully we can make my opponent use up their shields. That is going to be very beneficial to us if we can do that. Uh, they're going to be able to shield up the first one. And the second one, I guess, we're just going to have to uh, sort of take it. I do not want to use a shield here, so our Palkia will go down. And now we just bring in the Zacian. One Snarl should do. And we've taken out the Palkia. So now we're just waiting to see what my opponent decides to do. They are considering their options and they bring in a Lugia. So this is kind of why I like to run Wild Charge on my Zacian rather than play rough. It does give us a bit of an advantage in these kinds of situations uh, against Pokemon like Togekiss or Lugia. Basically fine type Pokemon. Uh, maybe Gyarados as well. Here we're going to go for the first Wild Charge. Our defense is going to be lowered and of course they're going to be able to get to a sky attack quite quickly. We're going to have to shield that up before we get to our second wild charge. But as we go for it, 
my opponent quickly swaps out into their Dialga. So we're going to have to play this a bit smart. We're going to quickly swap out into our Metagross. Thankfully, Metagross does handle these Dialgas quite well. Uh, I guess for future recordings of these videos, I'm going to try to go to a different location. Maybe use a Cafe's Wi-Fi, see if that helps. Because I do see that there is a lot of lag here. Um, either way, we're gonna be hit with that. Me we're gonna hit with that uh, Draco Meteor, and we're gonna hit him back with our own Meteor, the Meteor Mash, and that should be putting a lot of damage on my opponent. Uh, Dialga should be able to farm us down though, but just before they're able to, we're gonna be able to get to another Meteor Mash. So we're able to take out the Dialga. And my opponent brings back in their Lugia. So now this is going to be a bit of a complicated situation. We're going to have to get or charge up to two wild charges. And we, we have to make sure not to use any wild charge before my opponent uh, attacks. Because we do not want to get hit with a potential air blast after having been debuffed. Here my opponent is going to go for their air blast. Since we haven't been debuffed yet, we survived that quite nicely. And now we're going to go for two wild charges in a row. My opponent is not going to be able to shield both. So this is looking like another win. Second wild charge is going to go through immediately. And we're going to be able to take out that Lugia. So good game to my opponent there. And we are just going to quickly move on to the next battle. So far so good. This team is doing quite well. We're going to be facing off against a Melmetal here so not the best matchup for us though it's it's sort of a neutral matchup they could do more damage to us overall with these rock slides uh, but overall I think we're going to be able to win out at the end because we're going to be able to get to our Aqua Tails quite fast and Melmetal even though it is not going to be taking too much damage from these Aqua Tails it's better that we just stay in and do as much damage as possible rather than losing our lead advantage or swapping out into a Zacian. Uh, here we're going to just be hit with another rock slide, yada yada. No point in shielding that. We're just going to go all in, go for another Aqua Tail. And now with these Aqua Tails building up, my opponent is probably going to start feeling the pressure. And is probably going to want to shield soon. They do shield the first one. Uh, so we are we are at a 2 to 1 shield scenario. I'm going to have to actually shield here. Because I'm hoping to use up my opponent's final shield. Before we are taken down. Just going to quickly be taken out by my opponent. Quickly swapping into a Togekiss. This is great for us though. Because this means we can just bring in Metagross. And just purely farm up some energy. No point in going for any charge attacks here. Every time I get in against a Togekiss, I know that this is just going to be a farm bonanza. We're going to have to shield up a potential flamethrower though. They go for the ancient power. And they get the boost on top of that. Uh, that was a bit annoying, but it's fine. Because we're just going to be able to basically farm down nonetheless. Though we did take a bit more damage than we would have if it wasn't boosted. Uh, here just waiting to see what my opponent decides to bring in we have two meteor mashes ready to go right away gonna go for it and even if they shield the first one second one's definitely gonna go through they decide not to shield the first one and we're just gonna be able to farm down the rest of that uh, their final Pokemon is gonna be a Landorus Therian still don't have me a hundred percent Landorus Therian for the Master League hoping it comes back to raid soon so I can probably get one. It's an amazing Pokemon. They're going to be shielding the last Meteor Mash. And here we're going to be hit with a potential superpower. Let's see what they decide to do. It, it is a superpower, so that's pretty good for us. That means Zacian can do even more damage with its wild charges. Landorus Therian is still a part ground type, part flying type. So these wild charges will be doing a bit more damage than usual. Uh, here we're just going to see what my opponent decides to do. They go for an Earthquake. But it doesn't do that much damage considering the fact that they went for a superpower earlier. Thus lowering their attack. And lowering their defense. So now we're going to go for two Wild Charges in a row. 
and that should be enough to take out my opponent's Landorus quite nicely, winning us the game. So very good game to my opponent there, very interesting matchup. And we're going to quickly move on to the next battle. So now it is going to be Palkia versus Kyogre. Talk about the most ideal lead here. Uh, we're just going to go for the Dragon Tails as my opponent quickly swaps out into a Malmetal. We're going to bring in our Zacian. And Zacian has just been such an amazing Pokemon, honestly. I did not see it being this good when I got it earlier this year. Uh, just such an amazing safe swap Pokemon. Such an amazing generalist. Uh, we're just going to build up to two close combats in a row. Like I said, when you're building up energy for moves that debuff you, you tend to want to have to, or you probably want to build up to a couple so you can use them in a row without allowing your opponent to come in and do some damage at you after you've used one. So we're going to go for the first close combat here, which will be shielded. Second close combat is going to go through. Will they shield this as well or will they let it go through? Let's see. And the great thing I like about close combat is it doesn't lower your defense. Or sorry, it does not lower your attack, just lowers your defense. So it's not like superpower, which lowers both uh, attack and defense. Close combat does a lot of damage, but only lowers the defense, allowing you to just keep pumping out that energy. My opponent quickly gonna swap out into a Kyogre. And sometimes I will admit the lag is so frustrating because it doesn't let you really react lightning fast to move sets your opponent decides to do. Um, sorry if I'm complaining a bit too much about the lag thing. It, it is a big factor in Pokemon Go PvP that, you know, those with better Wi-Fi tend to win more. Uh, here, my opponent is going to bring in the Togekiss. We're going to go for a quick Aqua Tail. We have the Metagross in the back just for that reason. Though I have considered swapping out Metagross for Melmetal just to see how it does. Uh, I think Melmetal would be a bit more spammy. So here we're just going to bring in the Metagross. Start the farm down as much as possible. Uh, here we are probably going to be hit with a Flamethrower. Like I said, I always make sure to shield up just in case. It is a Flamethrower. And now we're just going to be able to keep farming, farming. As my opponent brings in their own Melmetal, knowing that I would have went for an Earthquake here, they decide to surrender. So now we're just going to be moving on to the next game. Uh, we're going to be facing off against a Togekiss lead. And now the only choice is we're just going to come in with the Zacian and start building up to those wild charges. My opponent deciding to stay in, uh, I guess because they do not want to lose uh, out on this farming damage. Or maybe they don't have anything that can really handle Zacian. Not sure what they're deciding to do here. We're going to go for the first wild charge. And now my opponent built up to a potential Ancient Power. We're going to be shielding that up. Aerial Ace, interesting. So they're running a Flying type moveset on this. We're going to be able to get to the second Wild Charge. And every time we use one of these Wild Charges, our defense is being lowered, which means more farming damage with their uh, Charm. As you can see here, they're just going to be able to absolutely chunk us down. Probably this is why they didn't swap out, because they know they could take us out. Uh, here we're just going to bring in Metagross though, the Togekiss Slayer, the one and only, and we're going to start farming as much as possible. My opponent is of course going to swap out, and we are going to go for a direct Earthquake, but not before building up a bit more energy since we can. So here comes the Earthquake, and this could potentially take out the Dialga right away. But it just takes a bit more farming after that. My opponent's final Pokemon is going to be a Giratina Origins. So we're just going to have to go for a few Meteor Mashes here. Uh, quickly swapping out into the Palkia. I was kind of shocked here. Uh, my opponent didn't decide to quickly swap out into their Togekiss. Opting to just stay in with their Giratina. Probably just going to go for the Shadow Ball, then swap out. At least that's what I thought, but they just decided to stick it out regardless. So, a bit of a mistake there by my opponent, I think, as they bring in their Togekiss. Not sure if their Switch Timer hasn't uh, uh, finished yet. I'm pretty sure it did. So, that last uh, move by my opponent there was a bit confusing. 
Not gonna complain though, because this means we're gonna be able to get a solid 5-0 set with the Palkia. This team honestly did do pretty well. And again, I will link the uh, YouTube channel where I did get this team idea. I think though Technical is a much better player than me. And uh, I always try to watch his uh, videos just to get an idea on the meta. I don't, I don't really like to copy uh, teams too much, but this one just seemed like a pretty fun team to run. And I thought I would showcase it to you guys, make you more aware of it, in case you want to kind of get up in the rankings as well. So anyway, we're just going to catch this mess sprite. Kind of annoying, so I tend to keep, skip these uh, catch screens if I don't get it on the first three throws. So yeah, I think we're just going to uh, skip it right here until I catch it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you liking the video, subscribing if you're new. This is Fatty, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.